find it here. All right, here we go. Let's go to my uh, my Facebook page, my Facebook profile. It should give me a message though. So many la layers to this, you guys. I love it. Right. Well, I was <laughs> looking for the invites oh, in I all these too. different places. You, you know, messaged me. I'm like, four seconds. That's right. All right. We're live. We are live. All right. I see it. So Twitter's going to drop in about a minute. And we already have one of uh, one of my Arosi teachers on, Mark Wendell. He's a uh, third week oh. in a row on, uh, on CV Tech Talk. So he's a. Uh, oh, yay. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yep. He, uh, he, he uh, been a lurker for years and i finally got him took a couple weeks ago to, to jump in on cv tech talk and, and oh. be an active participant in the last three weeks we've we've already got seven, oh we've already got seven people watching on facebook live as well nice. sarah um our good friend from uh dinuba she teaches in visalia she's on she's a second grade teacher and um it doesn't show me who else is watching oh now we're up to nine though so that's oh, cool okay. So um, welcome everyone that's watching us on Facebook Live. Uh, tonight, we are super excited. Um, Adam, do you want to- <laughs> Mark's double dipping because like he said, I called him a lurker. Oh, how so funny. He's like, <laughs> Twitter and Facebook. Yeah, yeah. He's Twitter that's a good thing though. It's not a bad thing. <laughs> like, do you want to do the introduction? Yeah, all respect. Uh, You're usually good at this. Yeah, so welcome everybody to CV Tech Talk Live for May 20th, 2020, the craziest year in history. Uh, anyways, uh, so tonight we have our good friends from Boy Consulting, Jen and Kate, are joining Hi. us tonight. And they're going to talk Hi. about how, and on Twitter and here on Facebook, we're talking about how to buoy up our fellow mm. educators. That's it. That's definitely something we need to do in this uh, yeah. crisis here and take care of each other. That's right. That's Thanks so for, true. Thanks for jumping on with us tonight. It's always good to see you guys. Oh, it's actually really good to see you too. <laughs> so that's wonderful. And we're all in, um, well, Kate, Kate actually is in a beautiful place in her, um, like this is a real uh, background for her. We're that all in. really Kate. is a big oak behind me. Yes. Love it. Yeah. I love it. It's like Jen's at a winery. It. I am at a winery and actually I am in a beautiful place too. It just seemed more appropriate to be at a winery. <laughs> and so are we actually, the, the, our, we're at the winery where we got married. So. Oh, I love that it. is so cool. Well, cool. <laughs> so our uh, welcome tweet uh, says a lot of uh, times people on Facebook um, aren't watching um, uh, the Twitters. And so we love to let them know what our uh, questions are here. So welcome tweet is to introduce yourself, tell us where you're from and what your job is. And the question is, how have you been practicing self care during the quarantine? So um, you guys can, uh, Jen and Kate, you can certainly answer on Twitter as well. But um, okay. Jen, what about yourself? Have you been uh, practicing self care? <laughs> well, <Or trying>. so, <laughs> yeah, I've been trying, but um so I live in a remote location, um, kind of not quite off the grid, but close enough. So I've been hiking a lot. And then I've been teaching a nature journaling class uh, to international students. Ooh. So we've been using kind of the quarantine as a time to just really integrate academics with nature journaling and thinking about social emotional learning. And honestly, the adults, because it, it's kind of a co-learning um, situation, the adults are saying, I think this class is for me too. So there's a lot of um, drawing and writing. And I think it's just so important right now to have these outlets. So for me, that's what I'm doing and gardening. Nice. That's good. <laughs> Maybe weed pulling more, more like it, but <laughs> weed pulling, did you say? <laughs> yeah, weed pulling. <laughs> I like that. So um, I definitely am not doing gardening because I don't have a green thumb like both my grandmas do uh, or <laughs> used funny. to. So, um, but I've been uh, doing my my way of journaling is writing poetry. So that's been helping me. Oh, um, yeah. My, my self care, so to speak. Not drawing. I'm not much of a sketcher. You were writing some, were you writing some poetry when I went and got you right now? I know. I lo Yeah, and I lost track of time. <laughs> and so it's a good thing you came and said it's CB Tech Talk time. So I have one that's um, in the. It, now it's like in the midst and I have a chance to finish it. So it'd be interesting to come back. So yes, yeah, so that's me. It's nice to have some way to express yourself, I think. Yep. How I about think you, Kate? So. Um, what are you doing for self-care? Okay, I'm trying to find a picture of it to show you guys just so I can oh, okay. tune it out. I have been doing paint by stickers. Do you guys know these? No. No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I want I feel like I need to go like actually get you an example of what it is. It's very satisfying. Imagine paint by number, but you're, you have 
stickers that you have to stick in the right place to make a masterpiece come together. Interesting. And oh yeah, it's really cool. I'm gonna go get one. I'm gonna show you guys. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, I really want to see it. <laughs> it smells, it smells fun. I'm not sure where she's going. Sometimes she disappears on me, you know, because this is my coworker and she's That's remote. Right. <laughs> So we have Kim Calderon from Fresno, just joined. Uh, she <clears throat> was an academic coach, and now she's moving back into the full-time classroom as a biology biology teacher. That's uh, yeah. Hi, Kim. Here. Yep, we got Kim. Hi. <laughs> now, now Mark has joined us again back on Facebook after I called him a lurker. <laughs> Nobody yeah. says that the no press says that the um, something sounds labor intensive. I'm wondering if he's talking about the. Um, paint by stickers paint by stickers or writing poetry or gardening i'm not sure maybe all maybe, maybe all <laughs> yeah he's just like i'm doing netflix and leave me alone and that's cool too you know that's cool too oh that's right, yeah, that's right. Okay, so here i'm going to show you guys how this works so you have a page like this and it has letters and numbers oh, and then wow. you have pages in the back with all the stickers with all the flipping stickers. Wow, that's interesting. And this is how it comes out when you're done. Oh, that is pretty oh, wow. cool. It's so satisfying. It's so... like puzzle meets linear space. I use tweezers. Okay. Like I'm like putting okay. it in the stuff. Oh, yeah. I don't <laughs> Fabulous. Have motor skills. No, I but, um, but my kids are doing it too. And I'm like, well, that's good for my five-year-old, right? She's getting her fine motor skills. Yeah. So we, uh, you guys on Facebook, we have one of your fans from my district. Uh, she's another one of our SPED teachers, Shirley, who uh, I, I think went to your stuff last week that I promoted. Oh, hi. Yeah. She, she says yeah. she's taking care of her, uh, of herself by gardening, reading, uh, repainting garden gnomes, and watching boy PDs. Oh, really? We gotta hang out after the the whole sure. coronavirus and garden. Really the kick, Take man. care, gnomes. <laughs> Thanks for watching, That's Shirley. Fun. We're glad you're here. So, question one just dropped, and it says, "What does it mean to buoy up other people right now?" Mm. So uh, I'm gonna ask you. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the source right here. That, that, that's that's your turn. Buoy up. What does that yeah. mean to you guys? Mm. Well, buoy up is our, it's, it's our buoy hashtag and um, it kind of goes back to our founding story. So Jen, you have to give like that oh, little chunk. That's such a good what story. I have, I have, oh boy. To, I have to change my background. Oh yes. So <laughs> I better get closer. I'm sort of blending in here. So I was here and, um, and I was at a conference for an, as in public affairs and basically Key West, and this is the southernmost point, and, you know, there's all these, you know, buoy legends and whatnot, and Kate and I have known each other for a long time, and we'd always talked about what might it be like to be partners with agencies, other organizations, like schools and districts, nonprofits, and it was a dream of ours, and one of the things that I saw about this is that this, this legend of the buoy was really a navigational mark, a beacon, a, a partner with sailors, a partner to the swimmers. And when Kate and I started to talk, I'm like, I think we need to be buoy because we can do some rescue work. We can ride along in a boat. We can do this kind of beacon like through courses and PD and it just really resonated. And so buoy was born. And huh? then Kate, you talk about the hashtag. Well honestly like like give me a theme and like any good english teacher i'm running <laughs> right so i was like constraints and yet freedom so oh. then it just became you know something that that really really epitomizes what jen and i do which is um we buoy each other up we keep we help each other navigate and we help navigate for others and so so often especially in the last couple of months um people have let us know that whether it's an experience that they've had directly with us or maybe something that we've put out there um it just it just seems like more and more often we're getting this idea of booing up others is really resonating with people too and, and it's just a nice way of saying like supporting each other in in short yeah. but um but it's linked to our our brand and who we are i love it and that's so important right now i um 
I've talked to, I felt like a week, last week or the last two weeks, I really have felt, I've talked to a lot of teachers and I just feel for them because they're trying so hard to connect with their students and no one has 100% participation right now and, and they're, right. it's breaking their hearts. And so mm. it really, um, I really felt like I needed to let them know, thank you and it's mm. not you and you're doing all you can and you're still making a difference because teachers have heart and they care about their students. Yeah. And they feel so disconnected and they, they, they have this guilt, I think, that they can't, they're not able to reach everyone. And so yes. I think that's part of, that's what I've been doing for Booing Up is just letting teachers know, like, you're doing great. Like, you're, you're, yeah. you're good. Like, even if someone's not responding to you, the fact that you keep reaching out is, mm -hmm. is it, it may be making a difference. So absolutely. Totally. Go ahead. We have Corey Coble from up in the Sacramento oh, cool. area. Who's there he is. Hey, Corey. He's very excited that he came across this link on Facebook. Love so it. Thanks, Corey. Corey, we're also on Twitter. If you want to jump on see the Tech Talk and Double Dip. Uh, we have uh, Mark <laughs> from Orosi, and he says, to me, buoy up means checking and making sure my coworkers are, out, are staying afloat at all times. I love yeah. my SPED team. I make sure they know it. Now, Mark does this thing for kind of a, for SEL for teachers. He calls it his daily dose. He puts it out every day uh, to, oh you know, to all of uh, all of his middle school staff. And uh, so I started seeing Mark been doing this for a few weeks now. I go, Mark, I love that. we put this as a blog because it's straight yeah. up blogger material. And it happened to be today. I'm doing a, a, a session on blogger and he joined. He's like, I'm, I got this. I'm starting this. So Mark's been, uh, been uh, spreading his wings a lot lately. And it's, uh, he's going to, bring that, uh, that, lit, that uplifting spirit message to Blogger now. So look forward to seeing that uh, come out on a daily basis. Is this Mark and Sarah that yes. at Mark and Sarah? Okay. Oh, that's yep. so awesome, Mark. Thank you for sharing that. And Adam, thanks for that narrative. Like, honestly, that fills me for fulfilling those teachers. Like, oh my gosh, that sounds awesome. And just, just exactly the epitome of what Bowie Up really means. That's so cool. We have Tim Calderon says, for me, Boy Up is working together to get things done and problem yeah. solve. This is where we really see the power of hashtag better together. Oh, mm. yeah. I love that. So well, I want to give it, I'm sorry, but I want to a quick shout out to another one of my, one of my coworkers out in Arosi. He's a seventh grade ELA history teacher. His name is Jose Montemayor. I was his bit of support provider many years ago. Oh. And, uh, he's been, uh, man, he's really just come so far as an educator, I really uh, enjoy working with him. And, you know, uh, as a tech coach, th 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 that's a lonely job sometimes. You know, yeah. being, being a TOSA is, can definitely be a lonely job. And yeah. you know, we don't always feel like we're recognized, but then just, you know, it was district mandated PD that he had to go to and he chose my session and he's been, you know, he's always been easy to work with. And just after my session, he sent me this long, really thought out email thanking me for his help. He says, text me your address. I'm bringing you some cupcakes. And then like oh. a later, <laughs> there, there's cupcakes on my doorstep. So definitely he's been, boo he's been that, that boy. Holy up smokes. I want to thank Jose Montemayor for that. I don't think he's on Facebook, but uh, there's plenty of well, people out there who know who he is and can spread the word. That's so cool. And um, all four of us have been, or currently are Tosas, right? Like both, right? So I think we can, that, what you said, absolutely. Like one of the most lonely jobs and especially right lonely. now, like if, <laughs> if you're in that position, like, oh gosh, my heart goes out to you too, because nobody knows what, what next year is going to look like. And so anyways, very cool. That's a cool story. Adam. I love that. Mm, I love it. And I, I just was going to say, you know, even this kind of was into question too, but just that whole buoy up piece is, is so important for us to recognize that we might need booing up ourselves, but also to see it in other teachers to say, or educators, administrators, whomever, those who serve in education, that they are in need of booing up. And we can see that through signs, um, you know, right now. And so we gotta be watchful for those and make sure we're being encouragers and, and just reaching out and saying, we've got you, we've got this. It's tough right now, but we're gonna all get through this together. Mm -hmm. It may not look the same as it did before, but we're going to be okay. All right. Question two just dropped and it says, what kind of support do educators need right now? I think they need CV Tech Talk. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right? They need moments like this where you can feel connected to people and where it's synchronous and it's, it's, it's people that, gosh, that are going through what you're going through. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was going to say too, I think um, 
educators need a lot of grace right now because they need they need to be allowed to have that professional autonomy to really try things and do what they think is best for their students. And so in that, it's not always going to work. And I mm. think that needs to be okay. Um, what kills me is I know some districts where the, the, like the TOSAs are making packets of work for all the, the kids. And so the teachers like don't have any investment in that and they know what's best oh, for their kids, you know? Yeah. And so um, those teachers are frustrated. I, some of those teachers I've talked to, and I, I really appreciate though those districts that are saying, you know your kids, I want you and should try and, you know, I don't want you to be overwhelmed, but I want you to try and reach out. Um, you know, younger kids, read aloud some stories to them, have them draw pictures about yeah. what you read, like things like that. But um, just get, I think that's really important. Those districts where I've talked to teachers that they maybe all are trying something a little different right now, they're more satisfied than those that are just, it's just thrown out that mm. they go, we'll take care of it for you. Yeah. Like we're professionals. Teachers are professionals. Right. Yeah. Not Hashtag that teachers easy. need it. That's mm. right. So here's, a, here's what I think teachers need more of. And, um, I, 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 I frame this for a little bit of shock value, uh, but then the, you kind of get into the meat of it where I think educators need to be on Zoom more. Ah, as, okay. in, as in for non-work purposes. So ah. Zoom to connect with your friends and family. Like we do every Friday, we have our happy hour from eight till the t till we pass out, and we have uh, we have we have about four or five regulars who like they, they, they if I haven't sent them the link by noon on on Friday they're like where's my link are we doing this mm -hmm. and uh, we for a while there early on we were doing Tuesday and Fridays and that got a little it's too much oh, I got too lot. much self care self care yeah, there was too much drinking <laughs> for during the week so like then we'll do Fridays and people are like hey when, 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 how can I get the link and uh, so. <laughs> It's, uh, That's cool. it's definitely a great way to end the week, you know, talking to people. We have uh, our good friend who, who joins us all the time from Missouri, Stephanie Pilardo is one of our regulars who just got a new puppy today. Yes. Yeah, so oh, yeah, talk about self-care. Yeah, she's definitely taking care of her, of her self-care right there. So we have a uh, John from Tennessee. John Carver is on. Yeah, he's so, a, uh, yeah, he, he hasn't been on a while. It's been yeah, a while. so he, he's a regular <laughs> back in the day. That's right. Um, Corey Coble um, agrees that, you know, um, we need permission to try. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. permission to try and not know if it's going to work. Absolutely. I love that, Corey. So, well, go ahead, Kate. I, I was just going to say permission to try and then also time to process, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I think that's really hard, you know, to find the pace and the rhythm. And like, the reality is like, there's so many things that are out of our control and for example, six weeks into all of this, when I feel like I just kind of hit a rhythm with, with Jen and with my husband and with the kids and with balancing everything, my husband got a new job where he actually had to go into work every day. And it was like, whoa, that's very different. And so just processing that. And I can, I have to say, Jen, you've been an amazing partner. So supportive <laughs> through all this. It's not been easy for anybody, but may I say it publicly that oh. I appreciate you. So Thank much. you. Well, you know, I think that's the other part too, is that um, in in just our partnership is is that we have a lot of grace, as was mentioned earlier, but we're also looking and we're saying, you know, what do people need right now? And so I think that at the schools and districts, teachers need um, a place to say, in this area, I'm not okay. This is a safe place for me to say, I'm not okay. And I could use some help here. And I know as we're winding down the school years across the country, um, there's summer. And with summer, we know that that can also be a time that all of this is gonna hit. You're not doing anything. And then you're suddenly going, holy mackerel, what's next year gonna be? What am I doing right now? What did I just do? Was that my best? You start to process all these feelings and that's gonna come out. And so self-care and reflection and grace for be so important. But also taking some time and saying, you know what, we are in a situation unlike any before. Uh, well, well, I say before in our time. <laughs> and hundred years ago, there was one. That's like hundred years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so we just have to say, okay, we're doing the best we can, and we give ourselves permission. Yeah. So Kim Calderon says, I think teachers need affirmation. What you're doing is enough. You are enough. I mean, that's a very concise but powerful mm -hmm. statement there um yeah. we did our last friday we, we did through our, our community of Arosi. um we did our um our school spirit 
a parade for pretty much the entire middle school and, and high school staff. We we drove through every neighborhood in town, and for a town of fifteen thousand, that that took like two and a half hours. It was yeah. But the thing that because I, I like what Kim says there about the affirmation is that seeing the affirmation, it was from the parents, and I saw a lot of grandparents out who were really just cheering the teachers, mm. and you know Aww. English and Spanish back and forth. They were they were really cheering them like I've never seen uh, the uh, the parents in that community really show appreciation before. They've always been very gracious and appreciative, but you, you could really feel that as we yeah. went through all those neighborhoods and like I've never seen before. So uh, that, that right there was very gratifying and interesting to see. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Awesome. So Sarah um, Vanderbyten talked about how um, we're going to figure these answers out together. Mm -hmm. you no, know, she does say the future is taking a toll and it is, you know, and I think acknowledging that is really helpful. And like Jen was saying, having um, a place where you feel safe to say that, you know, is really helpful as well. I know um, I had a meeting with, uh, with my department. And so one of the questions was, what do you need right now? Mm. Um, and I said, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, mean, I, don't, I don't really know how to say what I need, but like, it's just really I felt safe enough to say it's really tough to be working from home all day long and have a spouse doing the same and we're all in video calls and we have four kids under the age of 17 in the house and it's just tough, right? Like I felt like I could say that and then I said, but I guess that means I have empathy for other teachers and parents, yeah. and things, you know, but, but being able to say that without feeling like, oh, my boss is listening, which she was, but no, without feeling like, oh, I'm going to be judged and she's going to think I'm not doing as good a job or something. And so I think that safety, um, psychological safety is key. Well, and I think about the leaders and the administrators. Like I, I feel like we're talking a lot, like the sentiment out there, even, even commercials, you know, like on media, like we're acknowledging the toll on teachers, but I'm sitting here going, okay, yeah, 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 absolutely. I don't under, I don't undermine that at all, but my gosh, what about the leaders <laughs> and like, mm -hmm. where are they getting their buckets filled? Where are they, what's their safe space look like? Is there a safe space for them? Um, and thankfully I I'm connected in with enough, um, like, um, leadership hashtags to know that there's conversations going on, but I certainly think that this is a time when we need to carve out that space for our educational leaders. Because that, that's a burden, man. Oh my gosh. Making these decisions for, on behalf of everybody. Yeah. On the stress and the pressure too. And I think that's something where if teachers need a leader that is feeling supported, teachers need a leader that is, you know, got where they have the back of that leader because the community right now might not agree, probably doesn't. And there's a big divide on some of the things that are going on. And so with teachers coming alongside their leader and that leader feeling supported, it helps them lead in a more efficient and better way. Yeah. And so that's one thing I think we can do. And we also need it because we don't want a stressed out leader. That's no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I know the, uh, I already kind of, I've already given them a shout out, but I'll do it again of uh, my coworkers, Jose and Mark have been, Jose just personally for me was huge and Mark has been doing it for, so many people there um, as far as people who were question three. So question three just dropped. Um, who's doing a great job of supporting educators in their own health and wellness? So those are two right there for, uh, off the top for me. Mm -hmm. I also want to give a shout out to my mom because I mean, I mean I, <laughs> we have four kids in the house while we're on Zoom calls all day and she, she'll come over every day that, that I have the kids during the week. She will come and she will make sure my kids are getting their work done because I honestly, I, I, I just can't. That's uh, awesome. um, we tried, we tried. We tried. <laughs> We try, but I can't. And uh, so it's it's funny that, that my mom has come through so well that my my daughters forget that. Oh, daddy's a teacher too. He does know some things. <laughs> so I'm like, why are you working? Well, I have to wait for, for grandma to help me. Um, no, you don't. I tell you, <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, huh, dad? That's forget it. You don't just do Google stuff. <laughs> well, you make a good point, Adam, because I think teachers are going to need. Um, uh, some way to handle their chi own child care uh, needs and, and and ways for us to be flexible. And so like, you know, whether that's working with um, a daycare in your area or co-oping with others um, that you can agree to some social kind of norms, I think that's going to be really powerful for next year because no matter what we think it'll be like, we do have some... Ex 
and that there could be some online learning happening. So for some of us, and so I think knowing that we can have these systems in place is going to be key. Um, you, you bring it up, but just having mom there, but other, other support people too. And that's a tricky one. I mean, that whole, and that goes back to that, the whole admin challenges and Corey Koble, um, our good friend Corey on Facebook said, I can't imagine the thousands of decisions being made by admin. Mm. True. And, and the problem right. is like, even at the state, things are changing so often. Yeah. Um, and there's so much uncertainty and I'll, I'll have teachers that will say, well, what do you think it's going to look like? Because my principal's not really telling me yet, or well, they think it might be this or might be this, and I'm like, well, that's because they don't know, and I don't either. <laughs> Nor um, does our governor. <laughs> I'm like, I'm governor. sorry. And then, the, and then I'll have superintendents that say, Catherine, what are other districts doing? And I'm like, the same thing as you. They're wondering <laughs> what to do. Like they're coming up with plans, but it's yeah. if this happens, this is our plan. If this happens, this is yes. our plan. If this is yeah. so, they need like three different scenarios, and that's something we've never really done before. Like. Even when you talk about physical safety in the past and when we, we'd have lockdown drills and things like yeah. that, and, and, and we would have what would happen if a student goes missing and all these various things, you know, if there's a fight, we have our, our systems, we know what to do. Right. But it was always like one thing, like, I know this is going to happen. And so then this is my, when A happens, I do B. Now it's like, well, I, I don't really know what any of those things are going to look like. And so I'm kind of just guessing and it might be one of these and I'm spending all this time doing making this plan but then it's going to maybe be something else so yeah it's 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 just a tough time you know but I think it's it's showing the importance of adaptability like that's the 21st yeah. century well I hate saying that that's the now the 22nd the second. Day, 22nd you know? century well that's modern growth day, day, mindset yeah. right that's growth mindset and that's saying we can learn new skills right. by practicing new habits right so we even and if we might not have been as adaptable, we can start to say, this is what's needed for me right now. And mm. I can grow in this area. <laughs> yeah. yeah, my friend, my friend was, we were chatting a couple weeks ago and she said she, she um, drew a parallel between the situation and like an earthquake. <laughs> And she's like, I hate earthquakes so much. And I myself am like phobic of earthquakes. I hate them. And I live in Southern California, go figure. And she's like, she's like I hate earthquakes but as soon as it hits there's something you can like physically and emotionally and mentally feel changing as a result of it whether it's the community getting back together your community getting together rallying around like it's a very it's a it's a, a physical disruption which forces us to respond and pivot and she was equating the, what we're going through to that idea like this is going this is this is an earthquake, right? Like this is crazy, but we can choose to look at it as um, an experience that we're going through that's going to provide new opportunities that we never even imagined before. Um, and and I love that. Like in, in those dark moments, that's the kind of an idea that really does like brighten brighten me up and I can start to like riff on that in my head and imagine different things. Um, and I myself am so grateful for Ed Campos, who is like putting himself out there as it's just like not only a, a dear friend, but just um, a voice of physical health. And his his hashtag um, flatten the curve, flatten the belly is is just inspiring <laughs> a bunch of people to like get out and be active. And he's ha he's having a virtual 5K on May 20, uh, June 20th. And he's like, take pictures, take chalk if you can. Like, we're going to celebrate this 5K. And it is so cool to follow that hashtag on Instagram and Twitter because you're seeing people come out of the woodwork going, I walked a mile and I haven't walked a mile in years or like whatever it is. And like, I just, I love Eddie and I love that he's, you know, putting himself out there so raw like that because it takes, I mean, that's what leadership is, right? Like someone's willing to like put themselves out there. So he, he is somebody that for sure has been booing me up and, and that whole movement has been really special. Don't forget the midnight pedagogy, man. He's and the yes. midnight pedagogy, which, oh, which I haven't it's done yet. Us, but and the it's thing, so cool. And the thing with all of Ed's ideas, because me, me, if you put me and Ed in a room for five minutes, we're going to spew right. out a thousand ideas. But <laughs> all these ideas just come randomly off the cuff. That There's no rhyme or reason to it. Right. It just comes randomly off the, off the cuff. I mean, that's how Q-Tang was born. We were just sitting eating burritos one day and we were just BSing about Wu-Tang and then we just started playing Q-Tang and then it just blew <laughs> up and and, uh, that, that, and look at what that is. That's yeah. amazing. That community is so cool. Yeah, so it's, uh, 
And Ed's always coming up with a, a thousand uh, gimmicks and ideas a second. He's a, it's like the Energizer Bunny. I love totally. it. Totally. So question four already dropped. Mm -hmm. Question four says, how can educators best prepare for school in the fall? Mm. Which is kind of what we were talking about. We don't really know. Um, the mm -hmm. state doesn't really know. Um, and so, yeah, it, I, I do like that the state is saying uh, that there's going to be a lot of um, a lot of autonomy for districts to decide what's best for them. Yeah. Um, so that's that's interesting. I wonder what. Um, I, I mean, I, I think that's a good thing because there's so many different contexts in different places. Mm -hmm. But um, it's so interesting. We almost forgot. We all, <laughs> usually oh. we start by what, what are we drinking. So oh, night, hey, I've we're seen this before. <laughs> at the uh, yeah, at the at the winery uh, that we're at right now, this is uh, this is their 2016 Los Tulis Grenache. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> they had a flash sale, like four bottles for like 60 bucks. I'm like, that's a deal right there. I, I, Don't. Go on that. I have to say, wineries are doing great sales right now. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> I have been seeing this all over. So if you're thinking that you might want to stock up for next year, <laughs> might be the time. <laughs> Very true. That's for sure. Hey, that's self-care. Yeah. Well, it's self-care in to, moderation. To, to, yes. to clear. Let's be clear. <laughs> I feel like hey, and Cosmos on oh, and Facebook. Oh, hey. And the two both are a lifeline for so many. Oh, that's like that. Like the picture and saying that. Like, yes. Like, I see her smile. <laughs> yeah, the big old cheeser. And she, she's just like just bouncing around all excited, yeah. full of energy. And everything she says, she means it. Oh, yeah. I oh. know. Yeah, we had Adam and Anne on our podcast a few weeks ago to talk about the Flip impact grid. all of this yeah. has had on Flipgrid. Oh, and sure. that kind of goes to what I was saying what I was thinking, Jen, you had said this earlier, like there, like we need to take time this summer and like process everything. But I also mm -hmm. think like, as we process, we need to find empowerment in, um, you know, taking the time to get to know, not get to know tools, but get to know solutions for needs that we identify. So process out the needs, like what went well, what worked, um, what are the challenges? What what did it experience? What happened over the last you know March to May that I don't want to see happen in the fall? That didn't feel right when it went down. That that is within my realm of influence first, yeah. and and second that I want to do different. And then once you identify what those needs are, then it's about digging in and finding the right solutions, whether it's tech or not, whether it's a tool, whether it's a subscription or whether it's just a mindset, right? I, I think we have to take time this summer to be problem solving because we do have the gift of time, hopefully, right? That yeah. we aren't, that we don't yeah, have when we're process. living it. Yeah. Well, I want to say to piggyback off that is I did a little activity with Flipgrid in mind after our podcast and it was sort of taking that social emotional learning and saying, how can I fill up my heart as a teacher educator and how can I fill up students? And we did the, the flat teacher, um, the emoji project. Oh, so cool. <laughs> so I, I'll send it to you guys, but you put your little um, flat teacher and you send it to all your students and you, and you send, maybe send that home. And then you could use Flipgrid to have them record like different things they're going to do like reading, but also taking a walk or maybe nature journaling or gardening um, or just hanging out, you know, type of thing. And then that could keep the community going because think about in the summer, you're going to miss your students. You, you're, you may not physically have gotten to say goodbye. They're going to miss you. This is a way to really socially right point. take care of some of those things. Um, I did want to point out too that, um, it's important to process what's happened, but not stay there. Mm -hmm. And so what Kate was just saying was saying, look at everything. We call it a post morbid is a real term. Oh, it so cut out postmortem. Postmortem post is what it said. Postmortem, yes. <laughs> not postpartum. <laughs> <laughs> it did, it did kind of sound like that. <laughs> no, not that. So and then that's sort of like it has a set of questions that really process you through an event or project or something you're doing. And then you can start to say, all right, what am I going to take from this? I've gone there and visited, but I'm not going to stay. And so that's something we could also share with you guys too, to give out to anybody. 
cool. Hey, we have a, a Joe Young side, and I can't remember the last time I've seen Joe Young on Twitter, man. It's been a while since he used to be a regular on Tosa chat. But, Joe uh, Young! Joe Young, we, we, have a, great. we have a mighty Joe Young sighting tonight. It's good to see him Love on, it. here on Steve Tech Talk. It's been a while. But he answered question four. He says, no matter what the scenario, which we can try uh, <clears throat> which we can tr try to prepare for, it's important to continue to foster flexibility, adaptability, and collaboration. Mm -hmm. Amen. Good one there from, from Mighty Joe there. Absolutely. So well, you know, we actually finished all our four questions. Wow, that was a breeze, man. Just a breeze. Yeah. Hey, when you have a great conversation with some great peeps, time flies, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Almost as good as Joe's Crab Shack. Okay. Almost. Almost. Yeah. <laughs> but only if you go on Lindsay's birthday. Yeah, it's got to be Lindsay's yes, birthday. Yes, exactly. Sure. So I wanted here. to make... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No. Oh, I was just going to say, so what are some like, are there any, any nuggets of wisdom that you want to share with everyone um, just regarding like where everyone's at right now and, and teacher care um, to kind of put a bow on everything, um, you know, before we kind of uh, close out and, and let you guys, uh, and let us, all of us do some self-care ourselves. But what's yeah. some, what are some things, some closing, uh, you know, things that you, you might want to. I, know I, I have a really fun. good one. And, okay. and we <laughs> talked about permission earlier. And I think this will help. And we did this on Friday when we did um, a webinar on social emotional learning. And that was to first start with identifying that teachers are first responders, just like police officers, just like doctors. We are dealing with our young and sometimes there's been trauma and that we need to know that even before the pandemic, that was part of our role when one in five children have been abused in some way. Um, and maybe even in our past, we've had that and, and we're dealing with that. But also now with the pandemic, this is considered a traumatic event for everyone involved. And so as a first responder, I don't know that many of us have gotten training as educators on how to take care of ourselves and to deal with that. But I do think once you accept that part of your role is, is this first responder sort of position, it will make you take a moment to say self-care is so important because I can't get up and be that first responder if I'm not healthy myself. And I'm gonna give myself permission to have some quiet time. I don't have to clean every closet in my house this summer. Maybe I will want to, but I don't have to. Um, but that's the key is to just say, I'm, I'm going to take some time out and understand I need to heal from this and I need to be able to be healthy to return to school and be flexible and adaptable and creative with these solutions. So that was my, my little into. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Thank you. Great. Well said. I love that I get to work with you, Jen. <laughs> That's such a nice thing to say, what you just said. <laughs> Oh. I'm actually, I'm putting out there right now on Twitter, um, links to our free, um, e-workbook. Oh, it's awesome. a fillable e-workbook on discovering your SEL secret sauce. And we actually based it off of the 10 core competencies that Castle put out Okay. for, cool. uh, if you don't know Castle, it's kind of the, the mothership of social emotional learning and education and all that stuff. So, um, they have 10 core competence, 10 competencies or 10, they're not core companies. I'm sorry. They're the 10 characteristics of successful SEL programs. And mm -hmm. so it kind of gives you like what to strive for if you're in the midst of like either adopting or just thinking about social emotional learning for yourself, for your students. So we looked at those 10 indicators. That's what they were. Indicators. Indicators. And, yeah. <laughs> um, and we kind of unpacked each of them and put it into a workbook format to help you as educators process through like, what will your secret sauce be for social emotional learning? So that's absolutely free for you to download. Just go to the buoyconsultants.com slash store. And then and we also have a discount code um, for all of our summer courses, including foundations and social emotional learning. That's going to have a major remote learning twist to it. Um, and that's something that Jen and I have been working on for months and obviously iterating as reality <laughs> has hit us. And we're like, oh, wow, that is not an academic activity that will make sense in a couple months. So <laughs> it's a very responsive program, but we have absolutely put front and center in our mind. How can we arm our educators with resources that they, that we think they will need come fall um, and probably needed yesterday. So um, all you, those, all that information is out there. 
I'm, I want to put this on the on Facebook as well. It's Bowie Consultants Consulting dot org. What is uh-huh. it? Consultants dot com dot com. See, it's a good thing. Slash I slash store, and that's where you're going to see all of our free ebooks and then um, our courses that are launching June fifteenth. Awesome. Thank you for that. That was going to be yeah. my last question is how can, how can people reach out to you? How can they get support from you? So um, is there anything else you wanted to add on um, as far as that goes, as far as um, how you can uh, help teachers? I just no. started the flat teacher project with social emotional learning. Oh, perfect. That's, That's super fun. Just need to make a copy. It has the directions and then I created a little menu, but you can edit it, but really it's, a little menu for kids where you can say like, oh, I want to go for a walk with you. And you, you know, basically like flat Stanley. So yeah, I know and that's is, so perfect as you launch into summer. I love I it. I know, I know. I even put a sanitize the house together. <laughs> oh my gosh. So fun. Um, I think just, you know, we're on, we're on all the channels as okay. movie consultants and as Kate and Jen. So LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Um, if you are an educator and you want to get more dialed into this community, we have, um, both of you are a part of our um, smaller support group for educators and um, side giggers and consultants and people who kind of want to see what to do with all these niche skills that we have. So definitely let us know, let us know how we can buoy you up and, and just, you know, be our friend because we're friendly. We like, we like people. <laughs> we can, we make good friends. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much. I think we're going to turn on the Facebook live, but um, yeah. So, so excited that you guys were here and thank you everyone that watched and definitely um, check out the Bowie consultants, um, Bowie courses, uh, bowieconsultants.com slash store. Definitely uh, check that out. Um, I put the link in the chat there. <laughs> we can awesome. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. This was awesome. You finished the live one, right? Is it still live? <laughs> it's yeah. done, right? It's not letting me. See, Jen, this is what we, this is how we need to go live on Facebook. I'm glad to have gone through this with you guys. Yes. This you is can we just fun. turn that on on Zoom. We just turn it on. Yeah, you have to turn it on in the settings. And then you can also simultaneously live stream to um, YouTube. So you can have both. I saw that. Have that you done? So why did you guys fun. choose? Why did you choose Facebook instead of YouTube? Because we have more. That's what we've been doing for a while yeah. on CP yeah. Tech Talk. And so people are used to it. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll have more eyes on Facebook. Than we'll for eat. sure. Okay, so finished, sure. right? We're still live, Corey is saying. Hey, Corey, thanks. <laughs> oh, it says on Facebook right there. Live on yeah. Facebook right yeah. there. There we go. There we go.